1. Twelve years ago I lived across the street from a church, and a couple blocks away from a library. I lived in a town home right next door to a 72-year-old woman. I will change some of the names of the people and area so people don't bother the church library or homeowners there. I believe it's important to note a couple of things before I detail some of the concerns I used to have while living on Joshua Street. That is the name I will be using, not the actual name. I now live on the other side of the country, thankfully. Joshua Street is located somewhere in the high desert of California. I never had audio hallucinations up to the point where I moved to Joshua Street, nor did I ever hear anything out of the ordinary after I moved across the states. The 72-year-old woman I lived next to was a very sound mind and able-bodied. She never once showed even a moment of mental fogginess. She had lived around the area for a long time, she was retired, she left her house often. I will call her Hannah. The library had no alterations made to the building. That was made public, or immediately noticeable, while I was living there. I went past it every morning on my commute. The church was modern and no church bells. Not inside, not outside. No bell tower, no bell speakers. No clock tower, nothing. It was not a loud church. Joshua Street was a typical looking area for the dry, arid locale. We had no grass in our front yard, more like a cracked sand and clay-like turf with Joshua trees and other desert shrubs and plants scattered across the area. The town home was less than luxurious, but no matter how loud I played music or shows, or how loud my neighbors were, we could not hear each other, which was a plus. Hannah was a kind woman who I enjoyed talking to in the mornings, and sometimes came over to her home to have tea and listen to her stories. A month into living at Joshua Street, I decided to move furniture around so that the couch was up against the wall that separated Hannah's town home from mine. Originally, my bookshelves were there. I wanted to watch TV from a different angle in the house. This was not an issue during late night, but during the day I noticed some strange sound while sitting on the couch. I went to my bedroom on the other side of the room that shared the same back wall. No sound. I looked all over the house for a source. I eventually figured that it might be coming from the other side of the wall. Although Hannah is very quiet and I never received any noise complaints from her, nor did she tell me she could hear anything when I played my music loudly. I asked her to be polite. The woman is old but not deaf. Eventually I figured I should put my ear to the wall behind the couch. Clearly I could hear what sounded like church bells ringing. Needless to say, it creeped me out. Now, I am not religious, I am agnostic, so I didn't really know much back then about churches. I thought that it was strange that I could only hear the sound of bells from the wall, and not when I went outside to see if it came from the church. I shrugged it off and decided to ask Hannah about it in the morning. The next day I asked Hannah if I could come inside for tea and she was happy to have me over. I took note that her TV was nowhere near the wall that separated our homes nor any other kind of radio or speaker equipment. This is because her kitchen is a part of that wall. I told Hannah about the bells I heard through the wall. She told me she had no idea where the sound would be coming from. I asked her if she watched televangelists or wedding shows or had an alarm clock or loud timer, although I didn't really believe that the sound I heard could have come from any of those things. This is when phones were not high-tech and didn't really have the capacity to make high-definition loud sounds of whatever you wanted. She said she didn't watch anything of the sort, nor did she have an alarm clock. She joked about after living so long, you just wake up around the same time every day. She did say something that bothered me, however. She told me that there used to be an old church on the same large lot of land that was smaller than the current one. The modern church is very large, and had church bells but she never heard any church bells since then. She told me the church was rebuilt in the 90s. She thought that maybe I was dozing off on the couch and dreamed of the church across the street. I went along with it and went back home. The third night after hearing the bells, I decided I would go across the street and visit the church. At this point, I was pretty curious about it. Three nights in a row, and I found it would be at 6 p.m. every day. Mind you, at the time, I had no idea about the significance of this time. I would watch TV when I got home at six-ish. I would hear something faint and put my ear against the wall and 
Gong, 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 gong. I would listen until it either creeped me out or suddenly stopped. I visited the church around 5.45 and stayed there till 6.30. I didn't really want to be a part of the service so much as I wanted to listen for anything that sounded like the bells at home. Of course, there were no such sounds and after asking the staff there about the history of the church, they told me the same thing Hannah did, and also said they never decided to implement speakers or bells in the new building. Over the weekends, I started to notice other sounds through the wall, including the familiar bell sounds. The bell would sound around lunchtime too, and eventually, I figured out that this bell would sound at 12pm as well. Written in my journal, the bell sounded 12 now. I wonder if there is any significance to this, or maybe I'm just going crazy or something. 12 and 6, and now I'm hearing creepy music box sounds. Maybe I should tell someone about it. They'd probably just look at me weird. Back in 2007, a lot more people were going to libraries to do mundane things that many people today just do on their phone in bed. I didn't own a personal computer, and the Razer flip phone had horrible internet capabilities that you usually had to pay extra for. So I went to my local library with my journal and decided to do some research there. I quickly found that church bells are traditionally rung at 6am, 12pm and 6pm. At this point in time, I wanted nothing to do with the townhome I lived in. 2. To start this shit show of a post, I spent the first couple of years of what I can remember as my early childhood in a small podunk town in northwest Indiana. The if you blink you'll miss it adage rings true to this garbage town. It was one day near the end of my first grade year when summer had just begun when I was beckoned across the road by a friend that lived just on the other side. I had only spent a couple days hanging out with him because he was new to the neighborhood. I have no recollection of what he looked like. All I remember is seeing him for a split second before everything went white. I was six years old and I was hit by a minivan speeding down the road at about 30 or 40 miles per hour. I remember waking up in the hospital in complete and utter agony. My mind wanders to that hell sometimes. I saw my father crying for the first time. I should not have survived, and this was the first time I cheated death. Years went by and I became involved in the area's music scene and attended shows in very suspect venues across the country. On a weekend during my freshman year in high school, my mother decided to take a shortcut through good old Gary, Indiana. And that was a mistake that could have cost her her own life as well as the lives of myself and my friends crammed in the back seat of a Chevy Cavalier. Somehow my mother ended up with a sprained ankle and some pretty intense soreness. The person that hit us was clocked going over 60 miles per hour before blowing a stoplight and T-boning us. All while a Gary police officer was sitting in the opposite lane at a red light. I was the least at risk of harm in this situation, but had a different choice been made, that would never have happened. The next accident was caused by yet another dumbass decision made by the drummer of my band at that time. I was about 20 at this time and it was in the dead of winter in central Indiana. Instead of heading just a bit south to stay with a friend of mine, he decided to chance it and drive through a hellacious blizzard because he had to work the next morning. We ended up hitting ice, somehow blowing a tire on our trailer and flipping a full rotation onto the side of the road. Myself and one of the guys were the only two not wearing seatbelts. I was tossed like a sack of potatoes and just closed my eyes and hoped I didn't die in this bullshit van with this bullshit band. The van landed wheels down and my ass ended up in the seat the other unbuckled member was in. I ended up with a busted up thumb and a slight concussion. And he ended up getting tossed in the back of the van with a massive gash on his back that took forever to heal. The last accident that scared the living shit out of me happened in the summer of 2016 while touring with yet another bullshit band. To sum this up, Drunk Castle was coming at us head on and my drummer cut the wheel at the exact moment to ensure the front of the van wasn't hit. Had he been a moment too late, it would have hit on my side and could have easily killed me. We got out without a scratch on any of the four of us and proceeded to berate and threaten the drunk bastard that totaled our van, effectively causing us to cancel the rest of our run. What my mind comes back to when thinking about all of these events is how my mental state has slowly gotten worse as the years have gone on 
depression, and ten suicidal ideation. Little to no luck with success with music, or women, or even gainful employment. I stopped being able to focus on things that I cared about to the point where nothing seems truly real anymore. I can't remember a time since I was young that I've truly been happy and didn't live a mediocre existence outside of playing music. Have I died over and over again in another reality where things could have been more ideal? Am I being punished for something so horrible that I don't remember doing? Or am I just grasping at straws, typing my life story in the wee hours of the morning? 3. I was driving with my three-year-old in the car one afternoon, running late to meet my husband and mother-in-law around 1.30 or 2. I was stressing about being late because I prefer to be early everywhere, and here I was late, plus it was raining and there was traffic. There was a white car in front of me going just slow enough to make me miss a light. I remember being frustrated enough at the person that I stared at their car shaking my head. He had some kind of sticker on his back windshield that made me scoff and roll my eyes, just because I was being irrationally angry about being late and blaming him. In other words, I'm paying a lot of attention to this person, not just glancing and going about my business. So this is a big intersection we're at. There are two turn lanes to our left, then we're in the first lane going straight. There are two more straight lanes, then a turn right only lane. After I'm done angrily acknowledging the guy in my head, I look down at my phone, then look back to my kid in the back seat for a minute. When I look back to check if the light is turning, the car in front of me is gone. In the minute or so I had looked away, I heard no horns honking to indicate some crazy person would have run a red light halfway through the cycle and gone into oncoming traffic. There was obviously no accident, no sign that anything was amiss except the space left in front of my car where his car had been. I eased up and looked around, trying to see if I could find his car on the other side of the road, to see if he possibly made a run for it and was just driving on ahead down the road. No sign of the white car with the sticker. He couldn't have tried to pull a U-turn, because there were two protected left turn lanes to his left. I mean, I guess he could have, but it would have been extremely dangerous and highly illegal. And how would he have gotten away with it without at least one person honking their horn at him? How would he have crossed over the intersection without getting hit or honked at by someone on the other side? When the light turned, I sped up to see if I could catch up to the car at the next light or something. But it was nowhere around. I even looked at the gas station's parking lots on the other side of the road as I drove, and didn't see a car like that anywhere down that stretch of road. Like I said, I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation, but so far I haven't found one. 4. This is a compilation of stories, and it may be a bit long, but recent events are making me want to get this all out there. Number 1. This happened when I was rather young. My family was renting an old house in Mount Vernon, Ohio, that was haunted. That in and of itself is another story altogether. One day I was walking over to a friend's house. She was a girl I had a childhood crush on and so wanted to see her. I was maybe seven or eight at the time. Once I got to her house, I noticed something strange. In her driveway, where it meets the backyard, there was a fence that hadn't been there before. Not too strange, they could have just built it. Fair enough. I went to the fence door and opened it. And there was a pool there as well. One I know for a fact they didn't have a day ago. It was an in-ground pool, too, with stepping stones in the shallow bits. This was bizarre. In the pool was a woman floating on one of those inflatable lounge chair things. She had a straw hat on and beckoned me to come over to her. She asked me what I wanted. I had never seen this woman before in my life, but she seemed kind. Like she just wanted to help a lost little boy. I wasn't lost, though. Their house was close to ours, only separated by one house between us. I turned around and suddenly the fence was gone just like that. Everything was suddenly as it should be. I had no idea what to make of this. Number two. This happened later on in life, once we had moved a couple of times. This house was messed up. I slept in the basement along with my older brother and our German shepherd, Smokey. I was in my teens now. This was around when Bush had ordered the bombings in Afghanistan. I remember that house well. I lived there when 9-11 happened. It's also where I watched my Buckeyes win a national championship against Miami in overtime. All that aside, I remember details like this very well. 
I was sleeping one night when I was woken up by... something. There was a man standing in my room at the foot of my bed. He was hard to make out. And it seemed like he wasn't really there. He bent down and took one of my Lego Bionicles, Onawa with the Borok mask on it. Confused, I thought I was dreaming and just went back to sleep. The next morning I went looking for him, remembering my dream. And he wasn't where I left him. He was supposed to be next to my other Bionicle on top of my Lego box, but he was gone. His hammer was still there, but he wasn't. I spent weeks looking for him and couldn't find him. After a few weeks, I just gave up. A month or so later, he was back on the box where he was supposed to be. No one, not even my mom, could tell me how he got there. Number three. This was in the same house as the previous story. My mom was doing laundry that day, and I was sitting in my room next to the laundry room. I thought she was trying to get my attention because she needed help, but when I walked into the room, she was gone. The laundry was already in the wash. I went upstairs and asked how she got upstairs so fast, and she said she'd been up there for a while. I was very confused and insisted that she had just been down there trying to get my attention. She said she hadn't, and that was that. Number four. Fast forward to high school. We moved to Grove City, new house, new school, new life. For once, things started to feel like they were coming together for me. Life was, for the most part, normal. That is, until after my mother passed away. She had been very sick for a very long time, and we knew this was coming. With her death came us three boys doing our own things to cope. One thing I did with my little brother, the one from the Star Story, was go into an old abandoned house on the way to our school. At this time I had already graduated and life was ahead of me. But I wanted to do this because she had done it before. Upon entering the house, something felt off. We had flashlights and went cautiously up to the top floor of the house, the attic. It was all connected via stairs. No ladders needed. In total, it was four stories tall. Coming back down, however, was a difficult thing, because as we descended, we ended up back on the same floor as before, the one right below the attic. Picture it like this. We went to the attic, came back down, went down again, only to be in the same room with the attic above us. We kind of freaked out because we thought we were trapped. We took a second to assess the situation and thought that maybe we could escape if we went out a window, should this happen again. Thankfully, upon descending the stairs one last time, things snapped back to normal, and we got out of there fast, never going back there. Number five. This next one is a touchy time in my life, as I was in a horrible place. I lived in California with a woman who pretty much wanted nothing more than to ruin my life and make me feel worthless. Again, another story. One night, I saw a faint orange glow outside the window. I thought, great, this is a California I keep hearing about, always on fire. But no, it wasn't fire. I opened the curtains, and I saw a pulsing orange spotlight over the trailers next door. As I was in an apartment and had a better view of the park being on the second floor, I saw just how far it extended. The light was above me, so I couldn't see the source. But there was no noise. Everything was silent. Then the spotlight swept across the park and just... dissipated. This was Santa Ana on McFadden Avenue. If anyone is interested in looking it up, or if you lived there, it was near Bethel Baptist School, on the same block in fact. Can't remember the apartment name so. Interested to hear if anyone else saw this and remembers it. Number six. This brings us up to present day. While there are more things I can recount and will if people want to hear more, I've picked out the ones I like the best. These ones here have happened recently so prompted me to want to write these all out. I'm in a better place in life now and engaged to the woman of my dreams and my best friend. We live in Minnesota, and that's important given the activity in October of last year, when someone spotted lights hovering over the Shakopee Walmart. Anyway, you can look that up on your own, but maybe it's related to what happened to us. Last week, a few strange things went down. The first one was two light fixtures above each other changed. Now, when I say above each other, I mean they are directly above one another on two different flights of stairs. One going upstairs, the other to the basement where I live. I'm renting until she and I marry, then we'll live together. I point that out because she doesn't live there and couldn't have been the one to change them. She isn't even sure how to do so. The first one in the basement landing was supposed to have a soft white globe around it. 
like the other three in the basement. It's a finished basement and it's made to match. It suddenly changed. In the matter of an hour of not looking at it, into a clear ribbed globe. I only noticed it because I was ascending the stairs at night and had turned it on so I could see. And I saw the pattern it now cast upon the door. I looked up and was understandably shaken. The one on the other landing was a single-handing light. That is now a three-pronged chandelier with two lights burnt out. Those two things are strange enough, but it gets stranger. On top of all that, a few days ago my fiancé was at the place upstairs with her dogs, and I very distinctly heard a dog, a Lhasa Apso, viciously growl and bark. This isn't abnormal for him, as he hates squirrels with the fiery passion of a thousand hot suns, and so goes crazy when seeing one. As it's winter, I just assumed he finally saw one after not seeing one for a while. I went upstairs and mentioned it to her, only to find out that he was comfortably nestled in his bed asleep. She said he hadn't been up, and she hadn't heard a thing. That very night, I heard a scream from upstairs when no one was screaming. I lived with housemates who were awake and heard nothing. 5. It's been so long since I thought about this story. I am a 24-year-old woman who believes in anything and everything otherworldly. Spirits, glitches, magic, you name it. I have been listening to Glitch in the Matrix on YouTube for the past year now. I honestly don't remember life before Glitch in the Matrix. In fact, this thread is the very reason I'm just now remembering this story. It's nothing major, but to me, it's still cool to think about. I was 21 when this happened. I bought a cheap little HP laptop from Walmart in November of 2016 for my upcoming 22nd birthday. I was never a partier or a social bird, so I figured I'd just splurge a little. And that was that. I really loved my laptop because it made it so much easier to write. At the time, I was a freelance writer making small change for mediocre articles online. Anyway, I used my laptop every day, and I always kept it on the charger. When I say always, I mean always. So months later, around May 2017, I'm still using this laptop and one day the charger stops working. Not like how you have to position a charger on a pair of headphones a certain way for it to work. I mean like it was done. One minute it was working and the next nothing. This broke my heart, especially because I would have to wait until I got paid for my latest articles to afford a new one. I was stuck writing poorly on my phone until then. One day I had walked to the gas station to get some snacks and a lighter for my joint. The end of my street had a bus stop with a small seat. The seat is essentially a red pole with a few flat surfaces sticking out of it. I tend to look down when I walk. Not down at my feet, but down at the ground a few feet ahead of me. Everything was completely normal on the walk to the gas station. I purchased my things and headed home. As I was approaching the corner to my street, I saw something illuminated by the sun lazing on the ground next to the seats. As I get closer, I realize it was a long cord, not just any cord, but a computer charger. For some reason, I got nervous because it was not there when I walked to the gas station. And nobody was at the bus stop. I went to pick it up and realized that it was an exact match to my broken one, even down to the blue rim on top of the metal part that plugs into the computer. I was so surprised that I didn't know what to think. I took the charger home and tried it out. It worked perfectly. I couldn't believe it. So out of curiosity, I went to where my old charger was stored, and yes, it was still there. I plugged it in, and it was still broken. I didn't know what to think. I just put away my old broken computer charger and charged up my laptop with a new one that somehow appeared on a bus stop on the corner of my street, out of nowhere. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to 5 True Glitch in the Matrix Stories, number 95. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use and sent in stories for use in this video. Well, the weather has been, um, threatening snow for a little while here. And, uh, last night, as I was going to, I was about to go to, well, last night I wasn't about to go to bed. It was earlier in the evening. And, um, I had seen there was a weather alert in my phone. I was like, oh, well, that's annoying. Snow. I was, I was hoping to go out uh, the next day. And, uh... I did need a few things. Well, if it's going to snow, maybe I should just order a delivery. So that's ultimately, after a bit of debating back and forth, that's what I did. 
And uh, sure enough, it did start snowing uh, just before I went to bed. And it wasn't too bad when I woke up, but it was probably slipperier than I would have liked it to have been. Uh, but the, the guy came an hour early, and I, I, was, I, I was laying there in, in bed, minding my own business. Then I thought, well, I'll, 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 obviously I'll throw some clothes on, I'll, I'll go wait for the guy to come about 20 minutes before he's due, because they sometimes arrive early. But no, he came a whole hour earlier. Anyway, wasn't too grumpy, because I don't get grumpy at people that bring me food. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.